so I've been asked to do a live set a week on Saturday for a radio station called Buena Vida Radio, which you can find on Instagram. I'll leave a link in the description, which means that you can actually watch live if you desire as well. But the problem is, I don't really have much time to create a new live set. So what I've decided to do is kind of combine two old live sets. I'm going to use the first half of an old live set and combine it with the second half of another live set to create a new live set, kind of. <laughs> but the problem is that the patch is slightly different and also the tempo is slightly different and even the key is slightly different. So I thought we'd make a video talking about how I'm going to transition between the two parts and also just generally give my thoughts and patch notes on my live performance. Um, so you join me here in a transitional period between track one and track two. And actually the track that I'm about to move into, I have made a video about before. I'll leave a link up here. But I'll go over the sort of basic patch again. Um, so what's happening right now is there were some chords playing on the 404 and I'm using the DJ Looper to kind of freeze a section of those chords and they're just playing repeatedly like this giving a nice drone in the background and I also have the data bender frozen with too much bit crush on let's <laughs> take that off <laughs> And this is great because I am now hands free to move along to the next section of the track on my OP1. Now I am currently at 120 BPM. Let me just check that all these are the right mutes on the tracks. Yeah, so I'm at 120 BPM. This is clocked. Beads is clocked. And it is set to an octave above. <laughs> it's bringing in a nice little thing. I might freeze that actually. And the first thing I'm going to do actually is I have a sample and hold coming out of palms. And I'm going to put that into my filter cutoff frequency to add some rhythm to this kind of drone. cool thing you can do with this is bring the resonance right up. <laughs> I really love that sound. And I'm going to bring in the chord progression for the next part of the track. <laughs> I really love that so much. Resonance and bit crush, by the way. some point I'm going to take these off. Just 
leaving the new chords with the nice rhythm coming from the filter. Bring in some delay and then bring in some drums. line in there it's not actually super deep it probably could go an octave down actually and next I'm gonna bring in an arpeggio on the OP1 this section I like to use the data bender to do nice little glitchy bits about on this for a while adding just variety bring in I think although this is subject to change this other melodic element so I think it kind of gels well with the arpeggio and want to take the drums out because now I'm starting to think about transitioning into the next track which is from the other set which is at a different tempo <laughs> and I'm wondering how am I going to do this Right up. 
this is still a work in progress so I've not <laughs> figured this out 100% but this is definitely the process that I go through when figuring this kind of thing out. Now what I am thinking of doing is just going full out on the reverb because this is the thing I love and the black hole reverb on the effects aid just sounds incredible. This kind of thing I think sounds good so it's okay to milk this section. comes up I'm gonna fade the 404 out Start changing tempos down to 105. I also need to change bank on the 404. And I also need to change some of the filter settings. I don't want the sample and hold anymore. Going to be using an envelope from Channel 4 Maths. And I'm also going to be using an attenuator from Maths to change some of the panning on the dual dagger, but I'll leave that till later. And I'm quite happy to let this ring out. This is still coming from the arpeggiator and I'm going to fade in the drums and the new tempo. Off. Leaving some crazy ambience coming from the delay, the reverb, the vendor and beads are all adding to this. a new sound now. <laughs> I need to hit this in time. Make sure I'm all clocked up.
quite sure exactly what I'm going to be doing at this point. <laughs> um, maybe just having some ambience like this going whilst I bring in the next tune is the next tune is now fully in. Transitioned into the second part of my live set. And there's gonna be some work to do still. <laughs> I want to get it all really smooth. I want to know exactly what I'm doing beforehand. And I think that's maybe quite unusual for the Eurorack world. I'm not sure, but quite often one of the cool things about Eurorack is your setup can be different every time and so your live set is different every time and that's one of the things I love about it but I think coming from a, a band background um, I'm primarily a guitarist I've always worked with rehearsals and known exactly what order stuff's happening in and what's gonna happen so I do seem to feel more comfortable in that environment even though I do love improvising and I think I'm quite good at improvising so maybe I will push myself to do more of that in the future but anyway for the coming up for the upcoming performance this is what I was going to do and now there's a full other track that comes after this which I think is a really good finisher 
so I would um, recommend tuning in for that if you're interested um, I'll know more details nearer the time um, but I think it will be cool and also the radio station is cool <laughs> there's a lot of good music gets played on there a lot of good DJs and live performances but if you've enjoyed today's video then please leave a like and a comment subscribe if you have not already um, check out my Patreon if you'd like some more content and if you're treating yourself to any lovely gear then consider using my affiliate links which are in the description and I will catch you all very soon take it easy